This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you guys deserve to be happy? The answer is yes. Stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better. BetterHelp is a customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. And you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. Right now, I have a special offer for you. Get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash L-Y-B-K. That's better, H-E-L-P.com slash L-Y-B-C-A-D-E. Thanks again for BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Guys, welcome back to another episode of Lay Your Brick. This week, I, Cade, I'm alone. I'm going to be talking about how we think tomorrow is promised and a personal story about how important time is and also how important gratification is. Let's get into it. Perfect. Guys, Welcome back to another episode. Okay, this one's very important to me because I think a lot of us, just in general, all right, I'm going to start it off with this, think that, hey, I'm going to wake up tomorrow, which did you know that that's not promise? I know it seems crazy and it, it seems a little dark to say that, but it's true. Tomorrow is not promised for any of us. And recently there are events in my life that has transpired. And I think that this is what kind of warrants me to really get into this. This is something that's super important to me because I think we need to learn that like it's so important to live each day how we want to live it and do things that we want to do. So let's start in with this. This is kind of what started this all. Not really. The the story that I'll tell you later is kind of what started this all, but Justin Bieber has a song out, okay? And I forgot what the song is called, so that's my bad. But the first line in the song is, Young Blood thinks there's always tomorrow. Dude, if JB hasn't said it enough, <laughs> I will, this whole podcast. <laughs> we think that there's always tomorrow, especially us. Like, as you get older, you learn that your body is naturally decaying. And I'm sorry, this is going to get a little depressing for a second, but your, your body decays. You're not physical how you used to be and your mental state deteriorates and diseases come up and all this different stuff. And yes, that can happen now when we're young and it happens. It does. But as you get older, you learn those things and you're more prone to those things. So what this is talking about is, I mean, you guys know what it's talking about, but like, I I just, it's so important to me that we, that we understand that, right? I, I want you guys to really understand that, that we don't have, tomorrow's not promised guys. And so it's super important for us I wrote this down in my journal the other night, and I want to I wanna say it on screen here for you guys. We can't press rewind. We don't have more time. We need to stop saving things for tomorrow. Example, stop doing things we don't want to do. Start doing things we really want to do. Tell the people, this is so important. This is so important. We'll get on this later. Tell the people that we love and care about, that we love and care about. About, about them. Tell them that. Tell them that every single day if you need to. I know it seems like a lot and I know it seems annoying and whatever and maybe that's true. But at the same time, you don't know ever. You never know if you are going to say goodbye or hello to the someone for the last time. Let that sink in. Jay Shetty and Will Smith have a... Jay Shetty's podcast on purpose. He interviews... Will Smith and something on something that Will Smith says on that podcast is on that episode he says I treat my hellos and goodbyes like it's the last time I'm going to see them so he doesn't just like hey he goes hey how are you doing how have you been what's going on I don't know what he actually does but I love that thought because how important is that you know, for for people that live far away from their parents and even people that live near their parents, but they have their own houses now or when you're growing up and whatever. And if you're not growing up, then seriously, listen to this. I know it might be hard to be living with your parents. OK, it might be hard. You might think that you can do something better or they're annoying because they keep pounding on you about different stuff. No, dude, listen to me really closely. Enjoy that time. Enjoy that time to the max capacity that you can right now and the reason is is because when I moved out here I moved out to Fargo from Idaho okay I lived with my parents for 18 years as do most of you and when that happened 
I moved out here and I was fine, right? Like there was things that were preparing me for that. But there are times right now, especially too, when I'm 21 years old and I'm sitting here and I'm like, dude, I miss them. Okay, I miss my mom doing laundry and I miss my mom checking in up on me and doing family dinners. And I understand that everybody, if you listen to my last podcast, everybody comes from a different background. So how important is that? But that's why we need to cherish what we have and what we're doing in that time. It's so key, dude. I'm sorry. I'm going to say it. It's so key. It's so key. All right. And the biggest thing is like we need to live our lives and, and, and take the trip and 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 go for the girl and put yourself out there. And yes, it's scary. But dude, if it if it's not scaring you when I say dude in this podcast, by the way, I'm fired up. So when I'm saying dude, I'm I'm saying everybody. I just want to make that clear. I cannot stress enough that we need to enjoy the time that we are given and what we're doing. What we're doing. We need to realize that this could be the last time that I say hi to my sister, that I FaceTime my sister. Answer that call. I even wrote down this today, and I heard it in a country song. And you can ridicule you can ridicule me for that, but listen. If you have a dream, chase it. Say your sorries. Say your I love yous. And... That, that was the actual line. And then I added this. You won't know how bad you want to talk to that person, whether it be your mom, your dad, your guardian, your grandma, your grandpa, your sister, your brother, your aunt, your uncle, any, your friends. It doesn't matter. You won't know how bad you want to call them and have them call you until you can't, until, until they can't. So that's why when your mom calls you, and you're like, I'm freaking partying right now, dude. I don't want to answer this. Or I'm trying to get work done. Yes, there's scheduled times and there's this and there's that. But think about it. Because sometimes a five-minute phone call and just say I love you and say, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. That is super important because you could have missed that. And I know that some of this is really dark to think about. So I am sorry that this brings a light to this. But... If you're only focusing on that, you're focusing on the wrong part, okay? We need to tell the truth. My God, do we need to tell the truth. The reason that we need to tell the truth, though, and what I will say, is because the truth, that saying the truth sets you free, oh my God, is it right, right? The truth sets you free. So when you say something, make sure that you're telling the truth. Is it something that you want to do? Is it something that you care about? Is it something that you were putting yourself out there and it's full of vulnerability? Yes. But do it. Because if you don't tell that person that you like them, for example, like let's just go to this, right? Crushes, okay? I don't care what age you are, right? If you don't tell that person that you like them, they might never know that. Your actions probably show it, but let's just be, let's act like we're stupid here, okay? Because most guys are dumb, and we don't pick up hints, even if we wanted to, okay? And I don't mean to generalize us, but it's true, okay? And girls, the same way. Put yourself out there. I know that everybody has this ideal of like, I want him to make the move first. And guys, too, as we think about that, too. But we think about that because that happens to us so often. We have to make the move first move. We have to decide that stuff. And... You know, so for me, I think that it's such an important thing. Communication is so prone. Like, it's so key, not prone. We need to be able to establish something that, like, oh, my God, hey, I like you. So I don't know where you're at, but I do like you. So what do you think? And, yes, it's awkward, and it could be awkward, and it could be great, right? When, when we think about these opportunities that, are, that we're giving just in general, right, we think, oh, What's the worst could happen? Switch your brain, dudes. <laughs> Switch your brain and ask, hey, what's the best thing that could happen? What's the best thing that could come out of this? And that is hard to do, but I challenge you to do that because when you start doing that, you'll notice that your brain will do it more frequently. So ch- do it to yourself. Like Literally just ask yourself, just repeat it to yourself. Hey, what's the best that could happen in this situation? Because what that will do for you is then switch it and say, okay, hey, I can sit here. I can what if. I can overthink. But what if I tell her that I like her and she's like, oh, my God, I like you too. 
vice versa. What if you tell him you like him and he's like, damn, shout you fine. Right. So these are the things that we have to like put ourselves out there because those situations can arise. And another thing is no one can read our minds. All right. I shouldn't have to be the one to tell you that, but no one can read our minds. Right. So what I'm thinking, my girl or the interested person is not going to be able to tell what I'm thinking unless we are on a very intimate level. And at that point, you guys should, you know, you, whatever, who cares? The thing is, is what is happening here? I'm sorry about that. Um, the thing is with that is like, wow, you have to tell each other what's going on. That's why communication is so important, because if we don't say how we're feeling and what we're and what we're thinking, then how is that other person supposed to treat us? Right. And I know, you know, this argument brings up with this. Hey, I want him to buy me more flowers or hey, I want her to rub my back more. Right. But I shouldn't have to ask. Well, yes, to a certain degree. But how long has it been that you guys have been together? And how long has it been since you have asked and 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 facilitated those needs for her and yourself? Right. Because the major thing is here. I don't want to get in a relationship freaking thing. But the major thing here is do like what we want from other people, we need to give to ourselves first. That's like the biggest thing out there is you got to do, if you want to love yourself, you need to love yourself. If you want to love that other person, you need to love yourself first. I truly believe that. Now, yes, like if you listen to Claire's and I conversation, we talk about how you can work on yourself while being in a relationship. And so that's important too. But sidetracking, listen, we need to not take for granted those opportunities that come to us and live your life to the fullest. I know it's cliche and I know it's YOLO, right? And I've also heard the expression. I want to bring this up because this is always in my mind now whenever I say this stuff. But I want to bring this up. The other thing, the other side of this is, hey, no, dude, we don't have just this one life. We have many or I'm sorry, that was the wrong thing. It's more of like a, a situation where, hey, we have, we only have this limited time. Wrong. We have a lot of time, right? We have a lot of time, but we use it up by overthinking and not doing it and thinking like, oh, I want her to like me. Dude, ask her. And it's hard. And you know who's pushed me? Shout out to you, dude. You know who's pushed me? Colby Don Schaefer, okay? Colby's pushed me since the beginning of time to say, hey, Go tell her how you feel. I'm like, dude, shut up. That's scary. Okay. You can't tell me what to, you can't tell me to do that. And he would just sit there and he would say the same thing over and over and he would say it and he would say, dude, go tell her how you feel. You need to tell. And as soon as I started doing that, which by the way, it took many years. So I'm sorry, Colby, but it took many years. And when I started doing that though, oh my God, dude, like it's shaped out for me. Now, do they always like me back? Not necessarily. But I told them how I felt. And guess what? Kay doesn't have to waste time thinking then, right? Right? It can always change. It can always change. Change is freaking mandatory and I can't think of the word. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Change happens. Now, does that mean that she's going to change? She's going to like me? No, not necessarily. But there's things that you can do to track that and, and understand that. And then you're not conserving this energy for someone that, that doesn't deserve that energy, right? Because it's like, dude, why am I going to waste energy on this person if they're not? And that's not rude at all. And that's not selfish either. You have to keep track of your energy. That's so important. So you have to be able to do that. So put yourself in those situations take every single opportunity that you can thank the god universe whatever you believe in every single day when you wake up i promise you that goes to gratification but i want to move to a personal story one that's a near dear to my heart and i'm and i'm not being sarcastic or playful when i'm saying this so just know this so a couple years back 2017 november um my parents grew up with not grew up sorry i grew up with my parents having these friends and they and these friends were um tom and deb okay and tom um he has passed he had a heart attack in 2017 november 
and I was shocked. Um, I didn't really believe it at first. You know, I went through all the stages because he was basically like my second dad. And, uh, you know, he was, he was, he was from, it doesn't really matter, but he's from Little Falls or he, he, that's where I met him, whatever. So I met him in Little Falls and he was my second dad. And I grew up with him and, you know, then we moved out to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho and, and, and it's been a couple of years and then he passed and I, and I didn't really believe it at first and it was hard to like really contextualize for me. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but I couldn't grasp it. And my parents, my sister, and everybody, and I remember waking up. I remember the day that it happened because I woke up and I went upstairs and everyone was crying. And I was like, wow. But the reason I'm telling you this story is because what Tom did, Tom was a great human. Tom was kind and nice and I'm going to get a little emotional here. Uh he was he was kind, he was nice and he did everything for everybody else and he lent people stuff all the time. Um and he he wasn't selfish. He really wasn't. And I love him to death. And what he used to say to Claire and I, when, so he we would take trips. We'd go out there, he'd come here. He'd, he'd go to Idaho, and we would be playing this game, right? It doesn't matter the game. We, we'd play games. We'd have a good time, and Claire and I were on our phones one night. Well, many nights, but we're on our phones. We're Snapchatting, Instagram, whatever, while we're playing this game and talking with them and whatever. And he said this one phrase, and if you ask anybody that's around me, they they know about the phrase like that it's the phrase is so important to me and i'm going to share it with you guys today the phrase is be where you are be where you are and tom would look at claire and i on our phones and he would say hey be where you are no phone zone that's what he would say he'd say no phone zone and we'd put him away and to this day i am so Fucking thankful that I did. Because little did I know that sitting at a dining room table playing a game, you know, was, was going to be that impactful for me. But I spent quality time. And I spent present time with Tom. And I forever took that lesson with me now. Be where you are. He'd look at Claire and I and go, hey, be where you are. And I have it on my keychain too. And um, it, it, It's such a beautiful phrase to me because he, without knowing, especially him, like just without knowing, he gave us this phrase and hardwired our brains to say hey you need to be present you need to be where you are right now and <laughs> i mean it's just super important because what i'm hoping this story does for you is makes you realize that we don't have time we we, ha we have time with these people and that scratch that we don't have time scratch that we do have time, and we need to spend that quality time with people. Quality time. Put away the phones. Dude, we're on social media. We're on media all day. All day. But family dinners, and I don't care if you guys are fighting, if you're not, whatever the, it may be, just trust me. Put away. Watch that movie with your parents tonight instead of going hang out with their friends. Watch that show with your sister when she asks you to, or your brother, I don't, younger, older, doesn't matter. Play games with your family. Set up the Christmas tree. It doesn't matter. You get my examples. We need to spend that time, and if you don't, you'll regret it, and that's you can't do that because when they're gone, they're gone, Right? And again, this is getting a little sad. <laughs> but 
it's true. When they're gone, they're gone. And you won't know. And you don't know that you love something or whatever until you set it free and it's gone. Right? And then when it comes, luckily some stuff comes back. You know? Like, it, it's a very hard thing to realize, but that's why I want to talk to you guys about it because you guys need to understand that this is so important. And now I have another family member in my life right now that is undergoing some some stuff revolving death. And it just made me think and made me realize that, hey, people need to recognize this and understand this, right? Because that's what's so important is that we recognize and understand, hey, I need to spend this quality time with these people. I need to reach out. You need to call your mom. You need to call your dad. You need to call whatever. And I know that we all from come from different backgrounds. And I am so grateful for my family that I have and the people that I'm surrounded by. And I hope that you guys are too. And I know it's tough. And whatever you're going through right now, it's for a reason. You have to go through that. That's my belief. So that all being said, be where you are. If you guys want to take that and run with that, by all means, please use that in your life and use that in your, as your motto. And if you do, let me know. DM me. Text me. Whatever you guys need to do. Because that is such an important phrase to me and I love it so much. And it would honestly be really cool to see it affect other people's lives. I want it to see really affect other people's life. I don't want it to just affect mine because it's such an important message. Be where you are. God, I love that. And gratification is the next thing that we're going to be talking about here. And gratification is not only big in this whole essence of stuff, it's big in your life in general because what we find is when you are grateful for your situation and the, the things that are in front of you, then it you're not chasing anything. You're sitting, you're present because you're grateful for this. I'm not even joking when I say this. This is not motivational BS. I wake up every single morning and I thank the God, I thank universe for, for granting me another day, another opportunity to be my best self, another opportunity to have, to meet people, to be able to walk. My sister and I were talking about this the other day. You guys have any understanding of the fact that we get to get out of bed and walk to the shower, turn on the shower, get in this, do all of this by ourselves. Some people, I know you guys know this, but it's a hard hitting fact and we don't really realize this until it like, until it really hits you. So I'm hoping it hits you right now that we can do all of that by ourselves. Like some people are in wheelchairs and some people are paralyzed from the neck down and even worse, you know? And as you get older, your knees and everything, all this different stuff, it, 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 it is bad. I'm sorry. It, it, it turns bad and it, and it is not as useful later on. And so you guys, we like, I know it sounds crazy sometimes, but like, we have to be so grateful that we can walk, that we can run, that we can listen, that we can see still. Our eyesight fades, our hearing fades sometimes. And yes, they're, they're all preventative stuff for all of this, but that's what I'm saying. That's what like pure gratefulness is. It's, it's, it's realizing your situation. A lot of us, we think about gratification and this big thing of like, oh yeah, no, I'm grateful for my house. Am I great? And that's super important too. But having shelter, let's narrow it down. Realize that not everybody has shelter. Not everybody has food. I have a fridge. Half the time I open it, I bet you guys do the same thing. We open it, I'm like, mm, I don't really have anything. But you got tons of food compared to other people. I know that comparing and contrasting, Kate told you not to do that, but in this situation for gratification, think about it. Gratification is so important because we, it, it humbles you, it sets you down, and it says, okay, hey, this is what I'm grateful for. These are the things that I have, and I'm so grateful that I have that. You might not have a Lamborghini, but you have a car to go to point A and point B. You're not walking. You're not riding a bike. You know what I mean? It's a privilege. It's it's an honor. 
not necessarily an honor, I'm sorry, but like it's super important to have that. Being grateful changes your mind. It changes your body into something that like, hey, I'm, when you do it, when you switch it, when you make that switch in your head, you're like, okay, this is awesome. I get to get up. I get to go to my job. I get to work out if I want to. I can you I can build muscles. Like some people can't do that. And that that's what I want you guys to realize is that like none of this is really possible to some people. And so I know it's small and I know some stuff is stupid to think about like that for for many of you maybe. But like just try it. Try being grateful. Look it up. What are you guys grateful for today? Name three things right now out loud that you're grateful for. I'm going to say family. I'm going to say my body. And I'm going to say the shelter and support that I have. Right? And there's many more. But I challenge you guys to really think about that. Because, hey, it will change your lives once you start thinking like that. And I think the best thing I can kind of give you guys too with this whole young blood thinks there's always tomorrow, right? We think that there is a tomorrow waiting for us. But dude, we could get hit by a car and we could get hit by a plane. We could jump out of a plane and our parachute doesn't work. We could get stabbed at work. We could get shot in the streets and it's insane, right? But all of this being said, I still want you to know that, yes, you still got to live your life. And there are things that are going to come up where you are busy. But my point is, as long as this is in the back of your mind, as long as, hey, I know that this might be the last time that I talk to them, or I know that I care about them so much, I want them to know, you need to tell people about that. Uh, My cousin Riley, I'm going to shout him out again because he was on the podcast as well. He does that. He tells people that they're important to him. And he tells people that, hey, you did a great job on this stuff. So we can all take lessons from people that are surrounded in my life. And I'm older. I'm older than most of my siblings sometimes. Well, I guess. I don't know. But my my point is, is like, dude, just be so grateful for what you got and what you're doing. And and also just realize that, hey, don't take life so seriously. I, I know this is hard coming, especially after everything I literally just said. But like, don't take life so seriously. Get out there. Branch out there. Meet people. Take opportunities. Take risks. Take escalated risks. Take those because at the end of the day, it's your life, bro. And like, wouldn't you rather, this is a huge concept, but I'm going to say it really quick. I would rather chase after my dreams because they're not going to chase me. They're not going to do it. I would rather chase after my dreams than settle for a job, nine to five or whatever you want to do. Right? Because why, why would, why, I have this life. I have this, I'm young. Do take risks. Take calculated risks. Learn everything about something that you're, that you're passionate about. And if you don't know, explore that. Do certain things. Figure out what you really like. And honestly, look, they, take a look back at your childhood. See what you like doing then and try to recreate some of that stuff. If you guys are literally any, reach out to me. I will literally help you guys. I want to help you guys. If you don't know, just ask. That's a huge thing. So please, take these risks. Take these opportunities. Do something for yourself. Put yourself out there. And it might be hard. And you're going to say, okay, okay, I'm pumped. Let's do it. I'm going to do it. And then you listen to this podcast. And then, at the, and then, you know, after my voice fades out and you go listen to music or another podcast, you're going to forget about it? Maybe. But please, if you're going to take one thing away from this, chase after something and attract something. I don't even want to say chase because that gives into a whole different mindset for me. But I would rather go after my dreams and my goals than work a nine to five. Dude, I can work a nine to five as a safety and then work on myself after work and on the weekend. And is it hard? Yes. And does it get harder? Yes. You got a wife, you got kids. I don't care what your scenario is. You are always going to be able to find time to do something for yourself and you need to. And if you don't have time right now worked in your schedule, do that because it will elevate you to a whole different level and help you out. So I hope you guys 
Really enjoyed this episode. I know I did. I hope I know it took you on a roller coaster of emotions. We're all happy. We're pumped. We're sad. And then we're pumped again. <laughs> so I know this is a different style of one, but I wanted to do this one because it's super important to me. So please, with all of this being said, I hope you guys have a great week. A great week. I don't care what day of week you're listening to this. And enjoy life. Go out there. And do do it for me if you're not going to do it for yourself. Do it for yourself. But if you're not going to do it for yourself, then do it for me. Because that's super important. So, you guys are the best. Keep doing what you're doing. And please, I'll catch you in the next one.